That was fun and a good workout. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Psy Tell Us TV show. Today is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. And today is the Psy Tell Us Children's Talk It Out TV show, where we have our co-hosts, Emmanuel Kilpatrick Jr., Cameron Maxwell, and the other co-host guests, Emmanuel Kilpatrick Sr., mm -hmm. the father. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Side Tell Us Children's Talk It Out TV show. And today we're gonna to be talking about a topic that 90% ah, of the world is discussing, and that is the coronavirus. But we're gonna be discussing it on the level for the children. We're gonna be talking about how it's impacting their lives. So feel free to call in 470-251-4343. To voice your opinions, concerns, and how it has impacted your life as a child or an adult, but we are here to discuss this in any form and any fashion today. Sci Tell Us TV show broadcasts live right now on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Roku, Periscope, Amazon, and a plethora of other social media outlets. Always feel free to call in to the side, tell us Children's Talk It Out TV show every fourth Tuesday from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And then on second Tuesdays, call in to the side, tell us TV show where we have guests, showcase guests, where they are publicizing their businesses, cause, events, our topics of discussions from authors to construction workers to uh, restaurateurs, anything, any type of entrepreneurship or discussion that you want to talk about. We have that on the second Tuesdays from 9 p.m. Side Tell Us TV show also allows for promotions. You can cash app your payments to Side Tell Us TV show. Cash app, put a dollar sign. It's actually spelled S-A-Y-T-E-L-L-U-S-T-V-S-H-O-W and put a dollar sign in front of it. And we are preparing ourselves to have great topics of discussion in the future. Our, um, CEO and manager Jack is already preparing us to where if we are not able to actually come to the TV station, we can still zoom in and discuss your businesses, topics of discussion, any type of publicity event that you want where we can zoom into wherever you are. Status Network truly is the future of broadcasting. We are always prepared. We are always ready. We're broadcasting live out of Atlanta, Georgia, 
But coronavirus or not, Status Network is still there to assist you, to promote your businesses and discuss topics, whatever concerns you, your community, your city, your state, your nation. We are there for you. So be sure to tune in and watch all of the other shows that we have on live TV, Manifest TV, and what are some of the others as well. We have all of those. So be sure to contact us if you're interested in having your own show. It's a great, great working environment. We are truly a family. Everyone is there for each other. We help support each other. So we would love to have you call in, tune in, show an interest in having your own show, or participate and support my show and all the other shows that are broadcast through Status Network, The Future of Broadcasting. So again, today we're gonna to be discussing the coronavirus and as from a children's perspective, perspective of how it's affecting their lives and their socialization and things like that. And, but also, Emmanuel Sr.? Yes. What would you like to say before we jump into the conversation with our, with our boys? Well, I think the coronavirus uh, is really um, impacting the working, you know, families that are, mm -hmm. you know, especially the restaurant. I think the restaurant um, slash the government mm -hmm. are really hit hard due to, you know, corona them, you know, making sure that, you know, people don't catch it. So, you know, they yes. know that it's 10 or more uh, people that's in the restaurant. So, mm -hmm. it's, you know, right now I, I just feel sorry for the families that, you know, that don't have Nothing. benefits like the managers, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. they're, uh, you know, they're not reaping the same, you know, benefits that the managers are that's with true. the, uh, the health care, the back pay and stuff like that. So, uh, I just, you know, hope that uh, something works out for the families, you know, that live paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. And I understand what you're saying, because what's so unfortunate, they don't have the benefits that some of the senior uh, executives have and staff have, meaning when they're not at work, they just literally don't get paid because they're being paid per hourly. So our hearts go out to all of those who have been sent home and they don't have that continual income. Don't be afraid to reach out to your organizations within your community, your churches, even a lot of the schools in pretty much all of the areas are providing breakfast and lunch for the students. And unfortunately, some students don't get to eat if they're not at school. So I thank God that Georgia has such a kind heart in, con in being concerned about our children and our students to provide those meals for those students because they realize they're not gonna have those meals unless they are in a classroom setting. So don't be afraid and don't be shy to reach out and just look around, you know, all social media outlets, it's all over Facebook. Uh, they're putting out all type of information on what type of schools. Be sure and go to the websites of uh, the school districts in your county. They're posting the dates and times and the addresses of the schools that are providing meals for the children. And there's just a plethora of information. And then if I'm a, I understand mortgages are being placed on hold momentarily. But you know, what I suggest is if you can still pay mortgage, still, ooh, excuse me, still pay mortgage. Because again, they may be putting that mortgage on hold, but then there's gonna come a time when you have to pay all of that back. And so again, if you are still blessed in the position to continue paying your rent and mortgage, please do so. But I did hear about them putting the mortgage payments on hold. I haven't heard anything about them putting rent payments on hold. So get clear with your creditors and uh, the loan institutions and see what they're doing and what they're offering and what are the time frames that they're loan, allowing the payments to be suspended and find out if you know what type of interest is going to be uh, attached to that. You know, you really want to get clarity and beyond right information. Because again, if you can continue to pay your bills, I suggest you do so. Because I have not heard a directive where they're saying, oh, you don't have to pay anything and you don't have to pay it back. I don't think that's the case at all. So again, you don't want to try and let the mortgage payments stack up too much if you can prevent that. Because as a norm, rent and mortgages, they are our most highest bill that we owe. And for them to double up and triple and quadruple up, that could really become a nightmare. So you don't, you don't want to use something like that if you don't have to put these bills on hold go ahead and continue to pay your bills if you can and you're blessed to do so and those that we can help and assist let us continue to reach out and help each other in this time of need because we don't know what's going to be going on from day to day let alone for the next 30 60 or 90 days keep safe wash your hands continually sanitize don't touch your face and mouth much because that's uh, what i've been hearing is that that's how we 
you know, transpose it more, provide it, giving it to others, and that's how we catch it more. I didn't really realize how much I was touching my face a lot. So I purposely try not to touch my face, my mouth, my nose, and my eyes as much as I used to. And I'm just really, really aware of that. And we've always washed our hands, you know, but I'm even, we're washing our hands even more. We're at home the other day and I was like, Cameron, he's like, what? I said, just, just, just go wash your hands just because, you know, just wash your hands. Oh, great. Now he puts his mouth up too. So now <laughs> show that. But I'm curious to know, gentlemen, what do you guys think? Emmanuel Jr., so how has um, the coronavirus affected you? And you talk so soft. Let's move this phone over a little bit and move your mic over because I want them to be able to hear you, honey. Okay? So you may want to take your phone and put it right there. So you may have to scoot up some because, again, I noticed last time we were here, you had such a nice, soft-spoken voice, but I want them to hear you, Emmanuel Jr. The, so how has the coronavirus affected you? The, cor the corona has affected me. Mm -hmm. Talk up, honey. You got to talk up on that. The corona it has been, mm -hmm. it has been canceled. A lot of things has been canceled because of the corona virus and if I wanted to hang out with my friends I couldn't because I can't really go nowhere because of corona you can't go out you can't go anywhere with them are you still going outside or anything or what I still go outside but nobody really outside like that mm-hmm mm-hmm I know Cameron, one of his friends, even came over today and wanted to uh, come, wanted him to come out and play. And I said, no. And I was like, and you need to go home and be safe, too. You know, I just because, you know, you get to play and touch and then you wipe your hands and then you play and touch. Each other. It's not worth it. You know, you really got to be careful. And, um, and the way my mother raised me, you know, she taught us to enjoy home and to enjoy our environment. So I don't have a problem with it. I can come home Wednesday and not walk out the house till Monday. You know, I have food, water, clothing, and shelter, so I'm good with that. But um, how does it make you feel, though, when you can't get out and go outside and all that? How does that make you feel? Have you even thought about it a lot? or? No, not really. I'm used to, I'm used to staying in the house. Okay, okay. And play, or playing a game or watching TV. Okay, okay. And what else? I need you to just tell me about how everything you're feeling about it and everything. Oh, it, it's a hard time. Mm-hmm. It's pretty sad and frustrating. It is? Yes. In what way? I, I want you to elaborate for me, honey. And I'm sitting for tagging other groups in, uh, well, on Facebook. Well, so. it's sad because people, when they could be doing other things, mm -hmm. they have to sit in the house. And I know a lot of people don't like sitting in the house. They feel like they're being lazy. Mm -hmm. But people who like to exercise, they can still exercise in the house because it's multiple ways to exercise. Right. That is so true. I was just kind of getting in the mood to go back to the gym, and they closed my gym. <laughs> and I was like, bummer. But I also received an email where they were saying that while we are being suspended and being able to go to the gym, they're also suspending that monthly charge, mm. which was great. You know, I thought it was great, but you know, they took the money out of my account. Then here come the emails the next day. <laughs> I was like, they should have stopped, you know, taking the payments prior to them taking, uh, closing down the gym itself. But you know, everything is, we just have to really adhere to the laws and, uh, and just take it day by day. Cause that's all we can. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. And Cameron, how do you feel about the coronavirus and how it's impacting you and your socialization and all of that, honey? How has it impacted you? Um, just as Emmanuel said, mm -hmm. um, it's limited a lot of the social interaction we can have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is really a hard time because a lot of us mainly have fun with our friends. And since we can't do that, um, we're just sitting home watching TV. And as he said, a lot of people like to go out and do things, which right. is really common because, you know, they have outside for a reason. They build all these things for us to do and go outside and do. But since we can't do all those things, it's limited as much fun as we can have. Mm -hmm. And it's also limited. Um, it has a, like a restriction barrier on how much we can do because a lot of us like, um, let's say that they play football or something or right. like soccer or something, any kind of sport. Physical contact, mm -mm, you can't do it, cause um, 
in this one basketball game, they were scheduled to have the basketball game, but with no um, audience, which made a lot of sense because, you know, physical contact. You never know who does have it. And people who do have it, they might not even know because they don't actually start showing symptoms of it until two weeks max. That's true. Mm -hmm. But I'm Mm going to get back to you on what you were saying about this the NBA that um they mm-hmm. was having games without fans. Mm. Well how was that? Well they can't actually do that because they won't be making money. They won't be making money without their fans paying for tickets and pay, plan, pay, paying for mm-hmm. ticket holders and seats. Well I think they also can make money from uh sponsorship things like that i mean don't get me wrong i know they make a lot of money by the fans being in the audience but they also make money from the actual sponsors meaning the commercials that run during the shows and all that so have they suspended basketball because i'm yes. just not into they sports s- at all they, s- they suspended the season because it was two player it was actually five players that um that had got the corona. Oh, really? So yes. some of them had contracted it. Who were they? Do you all know who they were? One of them was my boy Kevin Durant. Mm. Oh, I'm trying to picture him. That Kevin name is Durant, familiar. He uh, was with the Warriors. He won two championships with the Warriors. Uh-huh, okay. He uh, hurt himself for the third one. They lost the championship recent of last year. Okay, okay. Uh, he okay. got it's hurt. I mean, he got, uh, he got the corona. He uh, uh, took a test and um, found positive. out positive. And it's also two. It's also Rudy Gobert and um. They're still alive though, right? Yeah, they're yes. still alive. Oh, okay. Thank God. Okay. Well, you know, Tom Hanks had right. Tom Hanks. He well, and he his says wife. He's okay. And who else was that? Tom Hanks. Um, oh God, Idris Elba, the mm. actor, and a couple of other uh, actors and famous people have gotten it. Yeah. You know, people need to realize that, hey, we can all get it. And right before, when we came in, hey, our producer, <laughs> Michael, he came, he's wiping down, he's spraying microphones. Again, we are trying to be coronavirus safe, free up in here. So again, a status network, I mean, you have to come in and uh, use the hand sanitizer and all of that. It's not a game, people. It is truly, truly killing a lot of people. And, you know, some people, oh, I feel fine and all that. Well, great, but you still need to be cautious and more respectful because, first of all, you could be a carrier, not show any symptoms, not ever get sick, but then here you are infecting everyone else. And that truly, truly makes a difference. And I just want people to really realize the seriousness of this virus and how we need to all be safe and cautious for each other. Okay, so what else do you guys want to talk about? I mean, regarding the virus and all of that. So again, I mean, are your you and your friends are they talking about the coronavirus? Would you all, do you guys have any conversations about it? Or I mean, just really, let's. I want this whole show to be about sometimes, coronavirus. This is so important. Yeah, like sometimes we do, but we don't. Make sure you hurt. Yeah, um, sometimes we do, but not often, because um, you know, um, it's a negative such pot. Um, it's a negative. Mm-hmm. situation mm-hmm. and not much of good comes from talking about negatives right unless you're unless you're purposely trying to find a solution mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like the scientists are doing because they're about halfway done with finding a solution for the coronavirus which is a great thing and they're having a lots of tests to see if the um, to see if the DNA works and um, yeah it's also limited wait what okay I'm gonna and t- are you getting nervous, Cameron? Yes, I am. Okay. Nervous, yeah, well, I have some, and I'm not being on my phone being rude. As you know, I'm interacting. I'm interacting with our uh, supporters on here and our side tellers fans, and they're wanting to know with, uh, regarding uh, Emmanuel Jr. and Cameron. Are you guys dealing with any type of depression or sadness since the coronavirus has started? And uh, what are your thoughts if you don't return to school and you have to continue? to uh, be homeschooled per se. So push the button, let's let um, Junior push the button, tell him welcome to the Sight Teller Show. Welcome to the Sight Teller Show. So you gotta speak up. I can't. Welcome to the Sight Teller TV Show. Please state your name and what city you're calling from. What you mean you can't? You gotta speak up, boy. I know he talks about it at home, doesn't yeah. he? You better act like you at home. Hello? Hi, um, Cece calling from uh, Bronx, New York. How are you all doing? Good. Speak You're doing up, pretty boy. good. How you doing, ma'am? 
I'm well, I'm well, thank you. I kind of wanted to piggyback on that question that you were reading inside from mm-hmm. the viewer that's watching. I'm really interested in hearing from a child's perspective, you know, as an adult. Exactly. Um, you know, b- because this is so unknown, this is scary for many adults. You know, people unfortunately are getting ill, more and more people are, you know, passing every day. And mm-hmm. when we first heard about this virus, it was, uh, we were led to believe that, you know, younger adults, were safe it's more for uh, people that are of uh, aging or aging with underlying health conditions now, exactly you know we're hearing that someone under the age of 18 passed away in los angeles and you know of course being a woman of color you know we automatically assumed oh no one of color is getting this you know virus exactly. and now we're, we're learning that that's also too not the case you know so um so as an adult you know it's the unknown is fearful so i really wanted to know what are the ch- what are you all talking about amongst yourselves and has anyone expressed any like sadness or worry or you know even just like socializing i know mm-hmm. that children you know while you're in school you have so much interaction with your peers and now that's very limited to none depending on you know electronics and you know telephone communication so i really want to understand what, what do you all think about what's going on today <laughs> i just look at emmanuel so so my friends they are they are waiting on it to end they think it will Mm -hmm. end in summertime and i do as well hopefully Mm -hmm. it does end in summer in the summer so i can go to disneyland (laughs) (laughs) disneyland is fun i mean i think that's a very honest you know answer you know children are very innocent and not really understand exactly what's happening today, you know, there's so much talk about social distancing and mm-hmm. even adults are ignoring that. You know, you see people in uh, Florida and California hanging out at the beach, mm-hmm. you know, and you mm-hmm. are uh, definitely putting yourself and others in danger. What are your thoughts, Cameron? Oh, um, my thoughts of people being endangered, um, it really is um, something. It really is because... Mm-hmm. Um, Cause like you said at the Florida, um, at some of the beaches mm-hmm. in Florida, mm-hmm. there's been a lot of um, people at the beach, and mm-hmm. over five cases have been caught just from, no, um, from college students mm-hmm. from being at the beach. Over about um, five students have been have been tested positive for mm-hmm. the coronavirus from mm-hmm. being at, at the beach mm-hmm. after that day. So, yeah. but how do you guys? How, oh, go ahead, Cece. And, and that, I have a couple more questions. So, I mean, I don't know if you all watch the news, but how is information being passed down to you? Are you receiving it from, like, your guardians? Do you see it, like, on social media, like Facebook and Instagram? Mm-hmm. Or how are you all learning about what's going on, like, day to day? Well, there's all sources of, of news. It can be from social media, the newspaper, mm-hmm. or... Even just Apple News on your phone. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes they just send out news to you on your phone mm-hmm. regarding mm-hmm. coronavirus, aka COVID nineteen. Exactly. And do you all read that, or do you kind of think like, oh, this will, you know, end soon? Let me go back to, you know, doing my work or playing my game. Like, mm-hmm. do you all read it, or what do you do? Honestly, we, t- we take the time out to read it, and we mm-hmm. we Excellent. look at it. Excellent. Mm-hmm. But I was, but actually the other day, mm-hmm. on Instagram, it was it was twenty three cases in Georgia, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. Athens, Jesus, in mid part of Georgia. Yeah. yeah. I, how do you all feel? You know, and not what social media or what your friends tell you to feel or your parents say you should feel. Like, how are you all feeling in the moment? Do you? Mm-hmm. Just tell me how you're feeling. Um, it feels like we have like a um, I don't know what to say, like a strain against us to like wear a box in a box. Yeah, it's like we like we're mm-hmm. just still knocking on that door, like hello, is the coronavirus mm-hmm. over so we can go out and do the stuff that we normally do? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. since we can't do that, it feels like we're getting held back and pinned against our arms. Do you all mm-hmm. think you can get it, or you think no, I'm not going to get it? Do you think you are at risk for getting it or not, um, or, or do you just think like, oh, that's not going to happen? To be honest, to me. everybody at risk. Amen. Yeah. Good, okay. good. I'm glad okay. you guys realized that. And I mean, do even, you all know some of the symptoms of the virus. 
Um, like early warning signs. Coughing, headaches, um, having difficulty breathing. Th- throwing up. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. So it's important that, you know, as um, Sai mentioned, if you're washing your hands, even if you're in the house, you know, you haven't left. It's just good to get into that exactly. practice of washing your hands and clean up after yourself. Mm-hmm. So my last question is I want to end, you know, like on a positive note, you know, like yeah. all education is positive, right? Depends yeah. on what we do with it. But since you aren't able to go outside, tell me some of the things that you are actually enjoy doing during the day now that you're not in school. We have a lot more things that we can do at home. Like there's mm-hmm. no more excuses anymore because we can say, Oh, I've been I've been having school, so I couldn't mm-hmm. do this. I've been having work, so I so I couldn't yes. do this and that. And now I can actually do it because mm-hmm. I don't have. School so what are those work. things that you can actually do? Like, um, let's say I'm gonna take this to where um I I was doing it er- mm-hmm. um to what I was doing earlier. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. for, let for say you wanted to make this like huge YouTube video. And you're like, oh, mm-hmm. I can't do it because of school, or I can't do it because mm-hmm. of work, right? Or reading a certain book, I can't do it because mm-hmm. of school or work. I'm too busy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there's right, no excuses right. anymore. You can you can do it now. Yeah, yeah. Now I think this is. I think I'm. I'm sorry. This is my last. Uh, no, no, no. That's fine. Think, that's fine. I think in the midst of everything that's going on, I think it's um, an opportunity that it's forcing us all to kind of slow down, right? and spend time with our family and loved ones. So I, I hope during this uh, pandemic that people are really appreciating mm-hmm. the the slowing down and spending time with family and loved ones and being able to do those things that normally we wouldn't do because we're always like on the go, you know? So, exactly. But I, I definitely thank you both for being courageous, first of all, for coming out and yes. also sharing your thoughts from a child's perspective because you know, so much, so often we don't think about the children. We just think about protecting exactly, them. But exactly. We don't take the time to sit there and think about what they're actually feeling and hearing and how they're dealing with it. So I thank you, young gentlemen, for yes. sharing your story. Yes. And having conversations about it. You know, so many times mm-hmm. we as parents and guardians, we're not talking with our children. We're talking to our children. We've mm-hmm. got to talk with our children on any topic of discussion that they want to discuss. You remember how it was when you were a child. I remember how it was when I was a child and I was to be, I was to be seen and not heard. That needs to be thrown out the door. We need to talk with our children every day, every day, every morning, every evening, every afternoon when we have the time. Because you need to understand how they're feeling. Because that which they're dealing with now and going through and feeling is going to cultivate their minds, their outlooks, their perceptions and definitions of life, their existence, their meaning, their worth when they become an adult. So we don't need to hide things from our children. We need to talk with our children about any topic of discussion that they want to talk to. And that includes viruses and all type of other illnesses, events, situations, and causes that could affect, that will affect their lives. And that could ultimately, unfortunately, cause them illness and our death. So yes, we do commend you guys for coming on the show and getting out. Look at us, we're using hand sanitizer now. Thank you, who brought this out? Well, we already used it when we came in, but thank you for that even further. Thank you, Cece, for those questions. We really appreciate that. Cece, how- Just be sure um, tonight just to continue to say a special prayer for all of us. Yes, amen, Jesus, Lord, yes. Please. Yes. Everyone in prayer. Yes. Thank you so much for calling in, Cece. We really appreciate you for calling in, and you stay safe. How is, has it impacted you and your life and your job and your socialization? Right, quick. Tell us how it has affected you. Sure. Well, here, here, I, well, I live here in New York City, so mm-hmm. um, you know the city has pretty much shut down except for non, except for essential workers or mm-hmm. those that are kind of in the forefront, whether in the medical field or. Um, working with vulnerable populations and so finances. I'm one of those. Yeah, finance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so I'm one of those essential workers. So right now we're working on a my programs are working on a skeleton crew. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. So just to ensure that staff are also safe because it's even though we're providing services to vulnerable populations, right? Oops. You know we have to remember that we're also human and we're also afraid of this unknown virus. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. Um, so you know taking public trace public transportation here in New York City, riding the trains and the buses, it's a scary feeling, right? Right, so, right. You know, ensuring that, um, you know, we have masks and gloves mm-hmm. as we travel to and from and 
just, you know, practicing social distancing, keeping right. six feet um, away from even those that we're serving, because not only do we want to contract the virus, but we don't want to expose anyone else to what we've been exposed to either. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. Um, it's, been, it's been quite, a, a, it's definitely a change. It's almost like a ghost town here in New York City. Um, you know, this is a city that never sleeps, and streets and blocks are empty. So, um, you know, we're definitely all feeling the impact. You know, we're definitely praying that this will you know, end sooner than later. You know, unfortunately, it may get worse before it gets better, but mm-hmm. as long as we're all practicing safety and ensuring that, um, you know, we're following the rules and right. um, doing our part. So, yeah, but definitely keeping everyone in prayer. And that has got to be quite an impact for the boroughs of New York City. I used to live in New York. That's all they do is walk around. That's all they can do for a mode of transportation are the subways and the buses, the trains. So for them to be on lockdown, that says quite a bit because New York City, Manhattan, is nothing but an entertainment area. So I'm just thinking about all these people on Broadway and all these restaurants where people don't have jobs and they're not able to come to work. You know, even the restaurants now, though the few that are open, you can't go in and sit down. And that's all people did in New York is enjoy the good eateries and restaurants. So that has got to be impacting a lot of people's lives like that. So my heart goes out to those, again, that are not able to work and are not having continual income. Uh, financially also. Mm, I just can't imagine. Also, you're dealing with people that um, you know, may have diagnosed with depression or anxiety yes. or PTSD or, uh, you know, fear of Goodness. just going outside. So it's, just, mm-hmm. it's a lot that, you know, we're all dealing with on a variety of levels. You know, whatever it means to each and every person, we're all dealing with something. But, yeah, a lot of people, you know, have been laid off. And, you know, and my brother asked me, are people still paying their rent? You know, especially rent still due on the first. Right. The, the, you know, the government will be able to have something in place where they can start mm-hmm. giving out, you know, money to help relieve families. But, you know, that's if, if you make over certain incomes, you won't be eligible. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, even if you aren't working or if you are working, you know, it's still expensive to live, period. Whether it's New York City, Georgia, Ohio, Oklahoma, it's still, you know, especially with families. So, again, just, you know, and to do our parts, everyone in prayer. Oh, um, thank you for that, Cece, I believe, yes. Mm-hmm. And um, I have one more question for you. Sure. Um, I've heard a lot all over the news where it says, in places like California, New York, and Florida, all those popular places like that, the um, coronavirus is most common in those, si- in those states as those, in cities. Um, since mm-hmm. you're from New York City, as you said, um, are what they're saying true? Do you see a lot of people wearing masks and gloves and such? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, myself, I'm wearing masks and gloves when I'm out in public. Um, That's a good thing. It's just a safety precaution. You know, they say that you shouldn't wear it. It, it won't, it doesn't impact you or won't help you if you don't, if you aren't sick. But, again, we're living in time of fear. So mm-hmm. I feel safer wearing masks and gloves because I don't know what the next person beside me may have. So, Again, this is, you know, a city where there are millions of people within a certain mile radius. And I was to a friend today, a few people that I know actually have contracted the virus, you know. And as we're seeing, more people are becoming severely ill than those that are getting better. So, again, you know, yes, to answer your question, yes, there are so many people walking the streets, in the stores, on the train, on the bus that are wearing protective gear. Um, even on the buses now, for the bus here, you can't enter the bus in the front of the bus anymore. You have to go to the back of the bus. And they wow. have it chained off that you cannot come within a certain speed of the bus driver. Mm. And I, I was thinking this morning, a lot of people um, have wheelchairs. Mm-hmm. And that's how they enter onto the bus through the front door. So, so many people with wheelchairs can't, use, can't access public transportation. You know, so a lot of people are being impacted in very different ways, not just financially, sometimes just the way of life and mentally. It's, it's a lot that's going on. But I do hope that, you know, they'll come up with, you know, a cure or something to slow down uh, the curve right now, flatten the curve as they've been talking about in the news. But, yeah, so many people are being impacted that we don't even think about. 
also also the be people who are going to the beaches they should stop because because when they get back they could they could mm -hmm. bring they could bring the virus to wherever they live you're right yeah spreading the virus even more and i think there's a misconception that if you are in a warmer climate then you know you can't catch or the, you know, you can't catch the virus. Or if I'm younger, I'm healthy, I have no mm -hmm. underlying issues, I'll never contract the virus, which is, again, it's a misconception. Exactly. But, you know, I don't know what it's going to take, unfortunately, for everyone to get the picture and wake up. But, you know, over the next few weeks or, unfortunately, months, you know, we'll see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. How you doing, yeah. Cece? Uh, this is uh, Emmanuel, one of the parents. I got a, I got a, mm -hmm. two questions for you. I want to know, uh, first question, do you feel like the government is uh, supplying uh, masks and doing all they can do um, up there in New York? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to make this a political thing, but, you know, we have a president that should not be in office, and he's contradicting everything that his advisors are mm -hmm. saying you know you had the top um i forget his name the um the medical person saying this is going to get worse you know and trump is on the news what was it yesterday or today saying that he wants everything to open up by easter which is it's, it's that he's mm -hmm. in a la la land and you know we have our governor that's you know begging there's so many people nurses and doctors and firemen and policemen that do not have the protective gear to do their job hmm. i was speaking to someone today that the police are like literally not making arrests or not you know issuing warrants because they don't have the protective gear and they're putting themselves at risk wow. you know we had some people i think it was here in new york yesterday that some like contractors and um technicians like beauty supply and um nail techs you know were donating masks and gloves because you know again nurses and doctors don't have any they're begging mm -hmm. for some they're having to reuse supplies so you know i can't sit here and treat someone with a virus and you know i don't have the proper gear to give you the proper treatment so to answer your question no they're not doing what they need to do to help um those here in new york and not just new york across across the country yeah i was just about to say that now my other question to you cc what about uh mm -hmm. you know the big hopes right now about the stimulus package for the families that pretty much uh, mm -hmm. that are not working. Do you believe that uh, the government should, uh, you know, uh, su uh, support support the families mm -hmm. with money just because they are not able to work? I mean, how if you was the president, what would you do in a situation I like that? I definitely believe they should. Now, the reason why that was um, the Democrats did not vote on that is because a lot of that million, I think it was like two trillion, a lot of that, a lot of that money is going to be bailed out like um, airlines and cruise lines. You know, I mean, they have money. They can suffice right now, but mm -hmm. it's families who are in need. You have so many families, even prior to the coronavirus, were trying to make it. So, again, a lot of people have been laid off because you know, companies are being closed down. So I think the government should supply money to help families. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a dire time now, and then it's going to boil down to, should I buy groceries or should I pay their rent for the month? You know, it's going to be, you know, times are going to get harder, unfortunately. But yes, the government should, and not to bail out these major companies, but to really give the money to where it's needed, and that's in the homes with these families and children. Yeah, definitely. You truly are, are right. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, you know, the government should do a little bit more. Um, I know that right now I was looking at in Georgia, we have a uh, mm -hmm. we have 800 people that have uh, came in contact with uh, the coronavirus. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the government could do a little bit more. I know it, it's kind of it caught everybody you know, for a loop due to, you know, this taking place and the procedures that are uh, that are happening uh, with the kids, right. you know, uh, as me as a parent, you know, I'm homeschooling my son and I understand mm -hmm. that, you know, a lot of these kids, they want to get out the house because they trapped in the house and, you know, a right. lot of anxiety. So, uh, 
you know, we definitely need a, a, a break to be able to, you know, kill this uh, virus. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the time. I think this is going to force a lot of people to really, you know, back and look at where can we cut corners. Fear of this may have, you know, starting to save and put money away for a rainy. Also stock up on supplies, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, saying that something like this may happen again and we don't know how long it's going to last. So it's really going to put things into, into mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Also, I was reading this newspaper. Speak up, baby. I was reading this newspaper, and it said mm -hmm. um, the government plan to put coronavirus in the food and pork and beef. And where'd you read that? Yeah. It was a it was a Muslim newspaper. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah. and, you know, yeah. everyone's entitled to what they think. I hope that's not true. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of speculation that this is something right. that is was man-made, the kind of uh, population control, you know? So there's a lot of different uh, thoughts and beliefs, you mm -hmm. know, around this. We don't know what's true, you know? It, it may or may not be true, but, you know, as long as we at least try to do our part, and that means social distancing, staying in if you have to, and not going out unless you really, really need to, and protecting yourself. Exactly. So, yeah, but there's a lot of... Um, thoughts and beliefs and conspiracy theories about this virus and Russia and Trump and population control. So, yeah. Hey, how you doing, Miss Cece? I, I, I got to say this, you know, it was saying I was watching Roland Martin uh, earlier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. they, they was talking about a situation where this guy in Florida was saying if you put a hot uh, a, mm -hmm. a blow dryer to your face, that they, that can cure uh, the coronavirus, but Roland Martin and myself, we all know that you're gonna kill yourself before the coronavirus right. comes to you. <laughs> so that was a crack up moment for me. Exactly. I was dying laughing, yeah. I had to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we have to be really careful and mindful. Right. You know, of course, like, if we know it, it's a joke, but some people, I was hearing today that there was a, a couple that actually took some type of medication mm. that the president mentioned. And unfortunately, that medication has like about three or four names. And whatever they took, you know, the husband passed away and now the woman is in ICU. So I think we have to be very, very careful, um, you know, about what we allow ourselves to, you know, to take in, especially with children, um, you know, taking, you know, black fur and lemon that's going to cure it. You know, we have to just right. be careful about what we allow to um, ourselves to take in, and more importantly, monitoring what children are doing because mm -hmm, we don't want mm -hmm. them to experiment. But you're right, <laughs> there's a lot of craziness out there. Exactly. You know, but again, people are afraid and willing to do and try anything to prevent from getting mm -hmm. this virus. That's so. true. Well, I would be reluctant to do anything that uh, Donald says to do. <laughs> the president, <laughs> you know, yeah, unless yeah. it's April Fool's Day, and I know you're just joking. Uh, but, mm -hmm. you know, you'd have to, as they say, be careful who brings you a bone. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. people are setting you up for failure. Um, mm -hmm. So, but what I've read is that eat a lot of fruits and vegetables and you cannot eat enough oranges and orange juice, mm -hmm. vitamin C, mm -hmm. fruits and vegetables. Always drink a something hot, hot teas, hot coffees, mm -hmm. hot toddies, hot gingers. Just anything hot. They say even just a cup of warm, hot water is good because yeah. it breaks that mm -hmm. mucus within, and that's where the coronavirus that is, is lodging, you know, is within mm -hmm. the mucus within our throats and lungs. Okay. So but when we drink these hot liquids, it helps to dissolve that. So when you think about it, just drink something hot, okay. you know, mm -hmm. and take hot baths, hot showers, you know, because, again, if my whole body's hot and heating up, I think that can have a positive effect as well. But a lot of things can't live in the heat. I yeah. actually take hot showers. Mm -hmm. every, Get up, speak up. I actually take hot showers every season. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. drink as many hot things as you can. It said try not to eat too many cold food items because I'm sure it can live in those environments more so than the hot. So, you know, get you some hot chocolate, you know, even just some hot tea or anything, a tea bag with, you know, sugar and cream or whatever else you want to put in it like that. A lot of hot soups and things like that, but a lot of fruits and vegetables. And you just can't have enough orange juice and fresh oranges because it said that vitamin C is really what knocks it out as well or works in a preventive method. 
uh, and all those, a lot of those that I've heard that are having issues with it too, they're the ones who already have bronchial problems, meaning unfortunately those who have asthma and things like that and as smokers who just, you know, have lung problems and all those things. Those are the ones that are really having issues. Not to say those of us who don't have any of those problems are, they're still dying from it as well. So, but I was just wanting to know you guys just to be careful when your friends want you to come outside and do you know how kids are, they'll tease you and oh, I'll spit on you, you know, uh -uh. none of that. Be careful and, and take social distancing very, very serious. Serious, yeah. You know, because it is, we all know we're going to die, but we, you know, if we can prevent it <laughs> from just being healthy, then let us do that. Um, and Cytelus fans, the coronavirus is trying to attack us here in the studio because right now for the past 15 to 20 minutes, that's why you saw me getting up, we have lost our feed on Facebook, but we're already on YouTube. Of course, we were on YouTube from the very beginning, but I do most of my advertising for the show on Facebook. This is teaching me that I'm gonna start breaking my neck to tag in and share our videos from YouTube in addition to Facebook, because again, I don't want you guys to miss our feed like that. So for whatever reason, it has attacked it and stopped it from uh, the live feed on Facebook. Is it back on now? Right, and, and yeah, we want you to always know you can watch it on TV as well. I put an ad on my, um, a video on my page a couple of weeks ago, thanks to my producer, Michael, reminding me and making me aware. He said, hey, remind them that your viewers can watch your show literally on TV through the live feed on YouTube. And then also, because you know, if you have a smart TV and you're watching YouTube, then you can watch this show on your TV through YouTube. And then of course on Roku as well. But again, we always wanna have a backup plan. And of course, Status Network, the future broadcasting always has a backup plan. Uh, it's just that I was making a primary to let you guys know and publicize my show on the Cytelus TV show on Facebook. But I, I want to I be think beginning henceforth, I'm gonna be promoting how you can watch the Cytelus TV show on your TV through YouTube more so than Facebook. So if and when we lose a connection on Facebook, the show hasn't stopped. You just have to toggle over and watch the show from a different social media outlet. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what's so great about YouTube. We broadcast live on YouTube anyway. You can watch it literally on your TV, on your smart TV, and get all this great information from the side tell us children's talk it out TV show, from the side tell us TV show, from live TV, from Status Network, and all of our other different channels that we do offer through Status Network. And if you want to have a show on Status Network, give them a call. That number is four seven. What's our number again? I don't have it in my mind right now. Uh, four seven zero. Two five one four three four three. So this has been a great, great show. Uh, Cece, I thank you for calling in. Uh, thank you for giving your input and talking to our gentlemen here on the platform. You continue to stay safe. You continue to protect yourself and your environment and all of your family, friends, and coworkers. We wish you nothing but love, peace, happiness, social distancing, and continual health. <laughs> we appreciate you, yeah, Cece. Thank you. Thank you so much, and likewise to you all. You all have a great night. Okay, you as well. You too, CC. So, be safe. So, boys, what I wanted to ask thank you, though, you. thank you so much, CC. Have a good night. Before we wrap it up here, boys. Thank I, you too. Uh huh. Thank you, honey. Thank you. I'd like to know, though, but how do you feel that you, since you can't go outside? I mean, how do you feel when, you know, I had I kept telling you the other day when you kept asking me, oh, can I go outside? And I'm like, do you understand what's happening? Do you understand people are dying? Do you understand that you can catch this virus? just from being around other people. And of course, no one is purposely trying to give us this illness, but touching our hands and nose and everyone else. And you know how you, you know, just as a kid, you wipe your nose, even as an adult, we may wipe our nose and not wash our hands immediately. And later on, we talk to somebody and we're shaking hands and all things like that. How do you feel? And that since, again, I won't let you even go outside and I let you go on the balcony, but not to the end of the balcony where it's touching the porch and you can talk to a friend right there. I'm not even allowing that, you know, because again, they're so physical when they play. They're always tackling and all that. So this is different. We're all sitting up here and not rubbing on each other. Yeah. But so how do you guys feel and you can't go outside and your friends want you to come outside? Just want to remind them before we wrap it up here. How do you guys feel about that? Well, most of them. Mm, go ahead, honey. Well, most of my friends, they are in a house. Okay. 
And it doesn't matter how so apartment. The point is, how do you feel? And you can't go out your home because no, your saying, home, they, it doesn't matter if it's a house or an apartment. No, I'm saying they in the uh -huh. house. Mm -hmm. Like, they not coming out. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. But how do you feel and you guys can't get out and interact like that? Well, I'm... I'm used to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I don't really go outside that much. Okay, I'm a homebody too. I love being at home. I can normally come home on a Friday and not walk out the house till Monday, and I am cool like that. <laughs> I love it. How do you feel? Um, Sometimes it feels unfair because mm -hmm. one person can go outside and another person can. And they're like, man, that's sad that you can't go outside, you know? But then when you really think about it, you're, mm -hmm. uh, the person who can't go outside your parents are just really, really trying to protect you. So even though you're upset that you can't go outside, just remember that they're only doing this for your safety. You gotta sacrifice to live life. Mm -hmm. And then also, mm -hmm. a lot of different ways to entertain yourself while mm -hmm. you're in the house. Exactly, being creative, being creative. And as you guys had mentioned earlier, now that you're being home more so now, you have a chance to do what you normally don't do, your videos, and you're an actor as well. I bet you have time to study your lines more and things like that, you know? Well, I'm still in school, really. Right. It's just you're being homeschooled, per se, you no, know? I've been homeschooled. Oh, that's right. That's right. And that's a treat within itself. I mean, you know, I know you you don't have as much socialization in school, but also you don't deal with a lot of ignorance that goes on in some of these schools because, unfortunately, most of the children at schools aren't well-mannered like you two young men are. And if I could homeschool Cameron, I probably would. I really would. Just probably let him get involved in a couple of sports or so. But I don't enjoy the fact that, you know, when he comes home, it hadn't been often, but, oh, there was a fight today and all. Yeah. Who wants to subject yeah. their child to that? You yeah. know, not us. <laughs> you know, we just don't. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you so much today for coming on the Sci Tell Us Children's Talk It Out TV show. We have our co host Emmanuel Kilpatrick Jr. Wait, look at the camera. <laughs> and then we have Cameron Maxwell. We have Emmanuel Kilpatrick Sr. with the cool shades on. <laughs> and then myself, Sai Talas. Again, today is March 24th, 2020. This has been the Sai Talas Children's Talk It Out TV show. And we have been discussing the coronavirus and how it has impacted the children, their lives, their perception. Tune in every second and fourth Tuesday, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And as I say, we dance it in. We dance it out. We're going to dance it out. So thank you, Sidetellers fans. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Tune in next second Tuesday on the Sidetellers TV show. So thank you so much. I don't care if I'm off beat. I like how I look.